Amen. Amen. Say Jesus. What's happening, Rock Church? What's happening? How's everybody doing today? We want to say hello to everybody watching in all our campuses, North County, East County, San Ysidro, Coronado, online. Let's give those people out there a big hand. God bless y'all. God bless you. And uh, can we, uh, um, in the honor of all the people who served our country, can we have everybody involved in the military, your families in the military, stand so we can honor you today for your service and your family service. Amen. 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 God bless y'all. God bless you. Well, thank you for uh, putting your life on the line for us, literally, and uh, thank you for the sacrifice y'all have made. Um, last week, about this moment, we had a police officer shot here in San Diego. Um, and let me back up even seven months or so before that. My wife was watching the news, and she saw a story about a police officer who was shot and first aid was administered to by the police officer's partner in a drain ditch, you know, a far distance from their police car. Um, where our police officers first aid kits are in their cars and we she was watching this and our chief got on the uh, television talking about that the trauma kit that that police officer had in Florida our police officers did not have and they're, they're military grade they go, they're, they're shrink wrapped they go right in your vest they're very small and compact but they have a blood clotting gauze in it so the chief was on TV saying how we needed that and here in San Diego so my wife says to me uh, hey you think we can make that happen and I was you know the Queens talks I got to bow down to the Queen so <laughs> <laughs> so I said well you know let's call, I called the chief up and said chief you know what's going on she said we you know we got I don't know how many police officers 1500 or whatever it is in SWAT so you know we went out and uh I got the money together. We, we talked to a few of churches. We also put chipped in most of the money. And then we bought the trauma kits. And, and the trauma kit that saved the police officer's life last week was what we bought for the police department. So, amen. <laughs> amen. And so it was, it was a blessing. We got to see her and meet with her. And uh, it was a blessing to see that thing work in action. She was shot um, out a distance from a car in her neck. Uh, very close to an artery, uh, and anyway, the, the the police officer on site had it in his in his right, right in, on his body, took it out, and and put the blood clot and gauze right in the neck, and they drove it. To, actually, he drove it to the hospital himself. It was only a couple blocks away, and and it was. It, I love when that stuff happens. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, before we pray, I want to uh, throw something out to you, and for all the campuses, for all you parents, something to pray about. I, I meet kids all the time, little kids, from two on up, under 10, there's no age limit to what I'm going to describe to you, but I'm mostly focused on the response I get from these little kids that are 5, 6, 7, 3, 4, and, and they, um, they'll pray for me or they'll say, their parents will call me and, or send me a video of them saying, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, 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 and some of them are so young, they said, oh, when they hear your voice and think, all they do is start saying that. They, they know that voice too, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. And, and, so, and I got prayed for about an eight-year-old yesterday. He was just praying, you know, praying for me, laid hands on me, pray for me. And, and uh, he's preaching, sharing the gospel. And so it's been, last year, two years ago, I was, we started uh, this idea of this gladiator school for little kids uh, to raise them up to... Not only to say be in ministry, but even though that would be cool too, but to, to give them an avenue for their gift to flow now. And so I want to encourage you parents to start praying. Um, you cannot manufacture a calling on your kid's life, but you can definitely ruin it. Um, <laughs> so I don't want you, you know, all I want you to do is pray. That's all you need to do is pray. I, I've seen, you know, in sports where parents, they, their kid's going to be the next LeBron and they got the kid out and they're doing all this stuff. And then by the time the kid gets 15, they hate baseball, football, whatever it is, because it's the parent's dream, not the kid's dream. And so this is something I just want you to pray about. And we'll make it available uh, at some point. But I want you to pray about it because God's stirring my heart again for it. Because I had this kid pray for me yesterday. Then I got an email, random, of this little girl. She's like two, saying, eating a hot dog, saying, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. <laughs> I was like, okay, here we go. Let's do this. And uh, so I'm listening to what God's saying. So just be praying about that. Does that make sense? And so if you got a little kid, grand, my grandson had his first birthday party yesterday. I'm already thinking about him. Uh, the brother, he got like 40 gifts. I'm like, yeah. it's like, this is, we, we, we got toys for joy in mind already. But, uh, um, but, you know, I'm thinking about him 
getting him right now. I mean, he can barely talk. He's, he's, he rides a bike, and he can walk, and, and he takes the bus, but he can't talk yet. But, uh, uh, but at some point, he's going to be, you know, when he's trying to get, get him preaching and sharing the gospel. So let's all stand and pray for those kids who are going to get ruined by their parents <laughs> and grandparents. <laughs> Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your faithfulness. And I pray you prepare us for your touch today. Prepare us for your presence. We thank you for your presence. And Lord, as we finish up our series called True Lovers, I pray you prepare us to love you through physical touch. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you give someone a high five next to you? Give them a high five, a hug or something. Amen. Let's see your Bibles on three. One, two, three. Say word. One more time. Say word. Let's turn to Luke chapter, Luke chapter six. What's up, East County? What's up, North County? What's up, San Isidro? What's up, Coronado? Microsite? What's up, all the people who are going to be in City Heights? Amen. Amen. City Heights. If you do not know this community of City Heights, it's uh, I think four square miles, 80,000 people, 50 languages, right here in the middle of San Diego. And it is an awesome community. We're going to have a church there this fall. It's going to be great. Amen? Amen? When a baby is born, the healthiest thing that you can do for that baby, as soon as the baby comes out, is to lay the baby skin to skin on the mother. Naked baby right on the bare skin of the mom's belly. And when you lay the baby on the mom's belly, there's something that happens between the mom and the baby. Number one, the heart rate of the baby is regulated by the mother's heart rate. The temperature of the baby is regulated by the mother's temperature. A lot of times they'll put the baby in an incubator or it's like a little bed with a light. And that is not as good ever as unless the baby has some ailment that they got to treat first. But the best thing is for the, mom, for the baby to be skin to skin on the mom so the temperature of the mom could, could regulate the temperature of the baby. The breathing of the mom will regulate the breathing of the baby. The heart rate of the mom will regulate the heart rate of the baby. The sugar level, the, the mom's body will regulate the sugar level in the baby. When the baby is, and also it will also decrease in pain, thus decrease in crying of the baby and stress from one environment to another, the, the baby skin to skin on the mom is the safest, healthiest place for the baby to be. When the baby comes out the vaginal canal, the baby's uh, uh, gut and skin is covered with uh, the mom's bacteria, good bacteria, and laying the baby on the skin of the mom colonizes the bacteria, so the, the bacteria is good and protective. All those are protective, God-designed uh, things that did not happen by accident. For all of you who think that that's just came by accident, it's all by design. Um, and when the baby's there, all these health um, aspects of the mom are transferred to the baby. And it's the healthiest place for the baby to be. When there's physical contact between the mom and the baby. Matter of fact, for all you moms who've had babies, when you would, had the chills in, in labor and then you had the sweats, that was your way, God's way of designing your way to regulate the baby's temperature in the womb. That's what that was all about. And so God put the, designed that there would be physical touch. When there's physical touch between the baby and the mom, something is transferred from the mom to the baby. Matter of fact, there's a, a hormone that women have more of than men called oxytocin, which is a bonding hormone, which when increased, it bonds the person, the, mother, the woman, to the person that they're with. And when the baby is on the mom, the oxytocin is bonding the baby to the mom. Matter of fact, when you, have, when you breastfeed, oxytocin rises in the woman and it bonds the mom to the, to the baby. Also, when the baby is on the mom, the, the baby will instinctively know to breastfeed and breastfeed itself and find the, find the place to breastfeed. It's unbelievable what skin-to-skin -skin contact does. When you are in contact with God, all that God is, his holiness, his love, his patience, his kindness, is transferred to you when you have contact with God. 
There was something about God because God is holy and we are not. When we, are con- when we have contact with God, physical contact, and we'll talk of physical contact in a minute. When you have contact with God, we being sinners are purified by God. Not completely because it's a process by which we are sanctified. But a holy God transfers his holiness to us. When Jesus was walking down the road one day, people were around him. This woman had an bl- a issue of blood. And she had an issue of blood for 12 years. And the Bible says all the doctors that she went and spent money on to get her uh, bleeding stopped. They, the, the Bible says she suffered many things by the doctors. They couldn't help her. But yet when she touched a holy God, the power went out of God and healed her. And in that culture, if you had sin or you were unclean because you had a disease, if you touched something, they became unclean. But because Jesus is eternally clean, when you touch him, you become clean. You don't make him stained. And so it's very important for us to have contact with God. As we finish this series called True Lovers, everyone say True Lovers. True. We've been studying the five love languages. And we've been studying the fact that there are five love languages, five primary ways people give and receive love. And if your love language is whatever your love language is, that's the primary way by which you give and receive love. And if you want to know your love language in your, in your lesson plan, there's a link. You can go to a site and learn about your love languages. It's very important for you to know what your love language is and very more important for you to love, know the love language of the person you're trying to love. Because a true lover loves people according to their love language, not your own. It's important for you to know how the person you're loving receives love and gives love so you can love them accordingly. So one, one of the love languages is words of affirmation. Some people are express love and receive love primarily through words of affirmation. They like to be told nice things and they like to say nice things. How many of you know somebody that's always saying nice things to you? Amen. And you're probably thinking, you can't be that positive all the time. You can't really believe all those things. That's how they express love. And then another love language is giving gifts. How many of y'all know some people is always giving you gifts or giving, they may not be giving you gifts because they don't love you, but they give someone else gifts. <laughs> they just, they're just always giving gifts. And, 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 they, and they like to receive it. And when you give them a gift, it's like, oh, me. It's like a big deal because that's their love language. And then there's also, uh, um, what's the other one? Uh, quality time. Some people, my wife's a quality time person. She likes us like, to have quality time, just us being together. Okay? That's not my love language, so I got I to gotta, I gotta love her according to that. And that's a struggle because that's not my, my, that's not my love language, so I have to learn and intentionally love her that way. Amen? And then there's acts of service. We talked about that last week, doing things for people, doing things for God, and then physical touch. Every single one of these love languages people have, uh, there's a primary and a secondary one that you have. You want to know what they are in the lives of the people you're loving so you can love them according to their love language. God has all five. He gave us what he has. And so we worship or love God, one and the same, by loving him according to all those love languages. We need to tell God words of affirmation, Lord, thank you. You are holy. You are awesome. You are mag- magnificent. You are almighty. We need, to give, give God, give, we need to give God gifts. And give, we need to give him our best. And we need to give him our best first. We need to give God quality time, one-on-one time, every day preferably, where you're just you and God. No technology, no text, no social media, just you and God. You need to give God acts of service. Everything you do needs to be an act of service to God. And today we're going to talk about physical touch. How do we physically touch God? Oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> How many of y'all would love to have physical co- contact with God? Amen. Okay, number one in your notes. Let's look at your notes real quick. Number one, God's touch is God's transforming presence. God's touch is his presence. God is a spirit. God created us so we can interact with his presence. God created you so you can hear his voice, so you can sense his presence, so you can sense his encouragement, so he can show you things. And by the way, you might think, well, I don't know if I ever heard his voice. Have you ever heard or felt this sense that you should pray for somebody? Anybody? Raise your hand. How about give somebody something? Raise your hand. How about, let's, you, let's, this is practice, okay? We get your arms working, okay? Get your arms working. How about, how about to do something for somebody? How about join a ministry? How about go to a small group? How about read your Bible? How about pray? How about get out your, out your bed and put, get your funky pajamas off and put your clothes on and get, and work? 
Can I get, can I get an amen? Just raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Say amen. Very good. And you had this sense or you're walking through the mall and you saw somebody you didn't even know and, you, and God said, look. You didn't know. You didn't hear. You just, ah. And then you, you locked on somebody and then God said, they're not feeling good. All happened. Huh? Anybody? Can I get an amen? And you felt this. Go pray for them. Ask them how they're doing. And then your mind started saying, well, I don't know them. And what if, they, what if they're freaky? And what if they didn't think I'm a weirdo? And what if they, well, you, you are. <laughs> Can I get amen? amen? So if you're a weirdo and people agree with you, don't trip. <laughs> Let's think about this for a minute. This is a little tangent. How many of y'all know that you're a sinner? Okay, how many know sometimes you could be selfish? How many know sometimes you could be, like, jealous? All the stuff. Okay. So if, if you know that and someone calls you that, they're just agreeing with you. So you should say, yeah. Don't fight the funk. It's true. So don't, like, argue. They said this about me. It's true. Take it. Let God minister. So you're in the mall. You see this person and you feel this sense that you should go. And you undeniably know this is real. Can I get amen? amen? That's God's voice. That's what it sounds like. And then what happens, a lot of times you will not do it. You will rationalize. Well, God, if they look at me, if they look at me and wink, if they look at me and wink and say, did God tell you to come talk to me, then I'll go. <laughs> and then God says, I can't work with that. And then as you walk away for the next 15, 20 minutes, the rest of the day you've got this uh, in your heart. Can I get Amen. The Bible says don't grieve the Holy Spirit. That's what you just did. God made you to have relationships so you can sense his presence. That's his touch. Some of you feel it on your arms. Some of you feel it on your neck. Some of you feel tingles. Some of you feel warm feelings. Some of you feel encouragement. Some of you hear voices. Some of you feel a breeze. All God makes his presence known to people in his own unique way. And, and what he does for you, it may be only for you. I know how I know. How God reveals when he tells me I'm here. I know he's always there, but when he says pay attention. I have a physical feeling that is always the same for 30 years. It's always the same. And, and, and actually there's several of them, but, and they're all consistent. You, and, and you have to know, God, how do I know you're there? You need to know that. Because when you are in his presence and you are interacting with his presence, he is changing you. He's transferring something to you like the mother to the baby. He's transforming his peace, his wisdom, his courage, his faith, a vision, an idea. And you have to pay attention to that. So let's read a few verses where God touches people and he transfers something to them. Just, it's going to be on the screen. We'll read this real quick. Genesis 48, 14. It says, Israel stretched out his hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hands, knowing Manasseh was firstborn, and he blessed Joseph. Deuteronomy, Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. Why? For Moses laid his hands on him. Moses had the spirit of wisdom and Moses laid his hands on him as though God's hand and touched him and transferred it to uh, uh, J uh, Joshua. 1 Samuel 10 verse 6, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you, not hover above you, come upon you. And you will prophesy and be turned into another person. When you have contact with God, you cannot stay the same. You can get information about God and stay the same. And what I mean by that, not change to be more like God. It's possible to get information in your head and not let it change your heart and just have information. But you cannot have an encounter with God where he touches your life and stay the same. Something ha you have to, uh, oh, you'll, you'll notice it. And so the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came on them and they changed him into another person. You should pray all the time, Lord, change me into another person. I don't want to be the same person I am today. How many of you know the person you were yesterday is not good enough for the person you need to be today? Amen? Think about, you ever see pictures of you when you were little, like high school, college, or 10 years ago, or however old you are. You ever see pictures of you or, or think about yourself 10 years ago and say, dang, that dude was messed up. Can I get Amen. My wife and I, we've we, we known each other for uh, 30, uh, 30, uh, 30, um, 35, 35 years. <laughs> and, and we'll sit around and we've been through some stuff. And we, we'll sit around. And by the way, for all y'all who don't notice, I used to not be saved. 
Because people see, they, they, all you know is somebody's a pastor. And they, oh, he's always, no, I used to be like a, a real, a really, really good sinner. <laughs> I'm trying to not be a good sinner, but I used to be a really intentionally really good sinner. Like I was a professional sinner. I was a professional. <laughs> and my wife, she was too, by the way. But my wife and I, <laughs> I'm just saying. How many of y'all were professional sinners? Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all had it down pat. <laughs> y'all like studied sin, okay? And well, we were looking at each pictures and we would just look at each other and go, God saved us. We had no clue. God saved us, changed us. Second Kings 13. They were burying a man and suddenly they laid it, I'm going to paraphrase, they laid a dead body in the tomb of Elisha. And when the dead man was laid in the tomb of Elisha, when the dead man's bones touched, when the dead man's body touched the bones of Elisha, the dead man rose from the dead. What? How many of y'all would love to put your living hand on a dead person and have them raised from the dead? Some of y'all ain't raising your hand. You wouldn't want to do that? Let me try that one. How many of y'all would love to say, I'm going to pray for this dead person and they come alive? Anybody? Okay, y'all are not raising your hand because you don't think it's possible and you don't want to be put in that spot to maybe even try and lose. Imagine you're dead. You're dead. and You're, um, you're dead. You're not even there because you're dead. Your bones, and someone touches your bones who's dead, and the Holy Spirit is so thick on your body still, they come alive. All right, that's like, what? That's what happened. Mark chapter 1, the leper came to him imploring to Jesus saying, if you are willing, make me clean. Jesus was moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I am willing. And as soon as he spoke that, the leprosy was gone. There was a blind man came to Jesus. And he says when he had spit in his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, did he see anything? And he looked up and said, I see men walking like trees. And he put his hands on him again and made him look up and he saw it and he, and he saw it clearly. Matter of fact, the Bible says Jesus prayed for this guy and he was only partially healed. And Jesus prayed for him again and he was healed. We're going to do a series on healing in July. Uh, and we're going to talk about is healing for today. Some people think healing stopped with the apostles died. We'll talk about that. Uh, can any, anybody heal? And we're going to talk about that. And the answer is yes. Uh, we're going to talk about all that. Uh, uh, but here, Jesus had to pray for the guy twice. We're going to talk about that. Uh, and, and we're going to pray. Matter of fact, we're going to pray for some people to be healed here in about 10 minutes. Some of y'all are going to get healed. This is going to be cool. Some of y'all are going to do it in 10 minutes. Some of your hearts are going like this right now. <laughs> One more verse. Revelation 1.17. John, who wrote the book of Revelation, says, when I saw Jesus, I fell at his feet as dead. Have you ever seen people on TV where they get prayed for and they fall over like that? Say amen if you've seen that. And you're like, man, what is that? Okay. Christians made up a term called slain in the spirit. It kind of poisoned it because it has a bad connotation. Uh, it, it happens in the Bible. It happened right here. John, who wrote the book of Revelation, saw a vision of Christ and he fell over like dead. When Jesus was arrested... They, they said, we're looking for, the, you know, Jesus Messiah. And, and, he, and he basically said, who are you looking for? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he says, I am he. And all the soldiers fell over. You know what happens when that happens? This is my, my, my uh, uh, description of what it is. Is that every cell in your body, and there are trillions of them, every cell in your body, when it's confronted with the presence of God, bows. All the cells in your body go, listen, I don't know what you're going to do, but we bound. <laughs> and you end up on the floor. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would just leave it at that. Don't get into all the, the charismatic, all the, all the negative connotations that some people put on the charismatic, that, that thing. D get that out of your head. Just that when you, the Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. That's not like voluntarily. You're not going to, you're going to, you're, you're going to be compelled to do that. I had someone pray for me and, and, I, and I, I said, I'm not going on the floor. Next thing I know, I was on the floor. My, my body said, you can say it all you want. We going down. <laughs> I, that's all I can say. <laughs> all I can say. And it was like a feather. Whew. The presence of God was so overwhelming, I could not stand in his presence. I had a bow. I had a bow. Number two in your notes. Look, look what it says. True lovers worship God by pursuing a touch from God 
the tangible presence of God. I want to encourage you to pursue the tangible presence of God. That you would say, God, I want to know your presence. I want to interact with your presence. I want to hear your voice. I want to feel your touch. I want to be transformed. I just don't want to go do a religious thing. I want to interact with you. You created me to interact with you. God made us in his image so we could have a relationship with him. That's why. I want that, God. Let's look at uh, John chapter, Luke chapter 6, verse 17. It says, He came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of the, his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits and they were healed. Say healed. healed. Uh, we're going to talk all about this in July. And then it says, and the whole multitude sought a, to touch him. They sought to touch him. They sought to touch him. They sought to touch him. Everyone say they sought to touch him. They sought to touch him for power went out from him and he healed them all. Say this with me. Say, God, I want you to touch me. If every day you got up and you say, God, I want you to touch me. I want you to speak to me. I want to know you're here. This is what God wants from you. And for all of you who have kids, how would you like your kids never to acknowledge your presence? How would that break your heart? That's what God wants from you. Acknowledge his presence. Don't just say intellectually, I know he's up there somewhere. No, God, you're here. I, and I want to sense your presence. Reveal yourself to me. Say that to God. Jacob wrestled with God all night. It was an angel of the Lord who was really Jesus. And he wrestled him and the angel said, let me go. And he says, I won't let you go until you bless me. God, I'm not going to stop until I hear your voice. I'm not going to stop praying until I hear your voice, until I see your vision. Until you, until you give me an answer. Some of you are feeling like you want to kill yourself. You are feeling suicidal and this was your last ditch effort. I'm going to church one time and then I'm going. No, no, no. God says don't kill yourself. He knows. He knows. And he has a plan for your life. You have to cry out to him and continue to pursue him with all your heart. And these people came from all over Jerusalem, Judea, just so they can touch him to be healed. Look, look at the next one in your notes. Next one. True lovers extend God's touch to others. Not only is God going to touch you, but you are going to be a representative of God's hand to someone else. You are going to lay hands on someone else and be a blessing to them. Now, by the way, you don't have to touch people when you pray for them. But when God was laying hands on people through his people, he was representing his physical presence. He was saying, can you show people how I want to love them? Touch them. I don't know if this is true, so please forgive me if this is wrong, but I was told this by someone in Hawaii. There's a term called haole. Y'all know that term? Okay, so how, how, anybody know what haole means? What does it mean? Without breath. But they, but, and, and, and when I was first told the term haole, I was told it meant white people. And then I was told it meant without breath. And then I, someone said, well, here's how it came about. That when the, the whites came to the island, instead of hugging and getting so close you would hear breath, to greet, they would shake hands. And there was no breath exchange. And only the light-skinned, pale white people did that, so they called them howlies. They said, oh, those are the without breath people because they're so far away. Now, whether that's true or not, it's a great story. <laughs> I think that's a true story. It does mean without breath, so that's where it came from. But my point is this. God doesn't want to be without breath with you. He wants to be right here. And the only reason he's not right here is because you've pushed him away. But if you say, God, I want to be close. I want you to touch me. I want you to transform me. I want you to teach me how to think. Teach me how to see light. Give me courage to obey. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray here in a minute. Pray for two things. We'll pray for healing. Because I love when people get healed. Then we'll pray for salvation. So real quick, everyone do this with your finger. Now I'm going to have you touch the person next to you. Not yet. 
You're just going to put the tip of your index finger on the tip of their shoulder. You're not going to be doing all this. <laughs> One finger. And if you don't want the person next to you to touch you, just do this. No questions. And if the person next to you does this, just turn the other way. Don't be all giving an attitude. Just because they're not, they're not a physical touch person. They want that space. You're already too close sitting next to them. You're going to, and this is just going to represent God's touch. And we're going to pray for healing and then we're going to pray for salvation. We're going to pray for healing and then I'm going to ask how many people got healed. In all the campuses. And if you get healed, you can raise your hand. We're going to actually, so how many of you need something healed right now? Just raise your hand real high. How many of you know somebody who needs something healed? Very good. So when we pray, I want you to think about your ailment or your family member or both. And then afterwards, eyes closed, heads bowed, I'm going to ask you to test it to see if it feels better. And I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you feel like it got healed. And, and I want you to go ask your family member, did it get healed? It's 11 o'clock or whatever time you're watching this message. And, and you're going to do it and uh, tell them at that time we prayed. Amen? So right now, I'm going to take the index finger. Friendly fire only. Ask the person next to you, I have permission. I got people doing this. It's pretty cool. <laughs> if you are by yourself, you can do this. <laughs> or you can just do this. Lord, I just thank you for all these people. And Holy Spirit, we pray you fill this room. We pray for your powerful presence. Su presencia poderoso. Pray this with me. All the campuses say, dear God, we believe that you are here. We want to experience your touch, your healing touch. We know that Jesus is the great physician. So in Jesus' name, we ask for healing all throughout our church and through our families. We pray that you would bring our bodies, our thoughts, our emotions, in line with the kingdom of heaven. We pray this in Jesus' name. Eyes closed, heads bowed, just put your hands on your thighs or just take it off their shoulders. Keep your eyes closed and heads bowed, all the campuses. Now, if there was something wrong with you and you can test it to see if, it, if the bruise is gone, the bump is gone, the pain is gone, I just want you to test it. And I want you, if you feel like God healed you, raise your hand really high and leave it up so we can pray for you and count and, and just say amen. God bless you, 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 God bless you. Lord, thank you so much. You can put your hands down. Lord, I pray for all the campuses and I pray for all the people who got healed on all the campuses. And I pray that we go home and ask and call our friends, our family who we were praying for, how do you feel? Because we believe you are the great physician and that you do heal. And I pray all those people who got healed will go tell as many people as they can, Jesus healed me. Jesus healed me. But Lord, there are people here who need to give their life to you. They need their, their relationship with the Father healed. They need their sin forgiven. So if you would like God to forgive you of your sin and grant you eternal life, and you would like your relationship with the Father healed, I want you to pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart. By faith, pray, dear God, please forgive me of my sin. I believe Jesus died for my sin and rose from the dead. I believe he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. Come live in my heart. Be my Savior, my Lord, and my Master. I surrender my life to you. I want to stand in your presence. I want to walk in your presence. I want to live in your presence. Thank you, God. 
As our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed, and all our campuses in a minute, I'm going to ask you to stand up if you prayed that prayer and just know there's somebody in your campus, wherever you are, that's going to pray with you. You are with family. And when you stand, you are standing in the presence of our Savior, our Master, our Lord. You have nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to be embarrassed, but everything to be proud of that you have surrendered your life to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. So on the count of three, I want you to stand, no matter what campus you're in, there's going to be somebody there to pray with you. If you prayed that prayer, one, two, three. Just stand to your feet. God bless you. Very good. Stay standing. God bless you. Very good. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Good. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Very good. God bless you. 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 Stand to your feet. Stay standing. Good. God bless you. Very good. God bless you. Very good. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We see you all on the balcony as well. God bless you. God bless you. Now in a minute, we're going to ask all y'all who are standing to come down to the altar. The rest of us, we are going to cheer for them. So if you're, if you're in the balcony, all you got to do is turn around and walk up and the ushers will bring you down. Come on down to the altar. Let's give them a hand. They come on down. Amen. God bless you. Stay right there. Stay right there. Just face me. Just face me. God bless you. 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 Come on, 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 come on. Hello, how are you? God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Let me, uh, Encourage all of you not to dumb down our relationship with God to just coming to a service and doing some religious stuff. Make sure that we are connecting with God every day. When you walk out of here, you can talk to him. You're driving home. You, there's no time you can never not talk to him. And listen, it's called praying without ceasing. That's what that means. That you're constant contact with him, asking him, what do, in the middle of a conversation, Lord, what is this person really saying to me? How do I love this person? How do I confront this person? How do I encourage this person? T speak to me all day, every day. That's what God wants. Just like when you have a little baby, that's what you want. And just like when that baby's on that mother's womb, on that mother's skin, and that, there's communication without even being communication, this transformation of life, that's what God does in your life. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And as there's, as there's transformation of life, when that baby's laying on that, on that mom, that's how we got to be in God's arms 24-7. You never want to get so grown that you don't need him because you're not. <laughs> and you'll, you'll be reminded of that the day you die if you're conscious enough to know uh, how frail you are. And so we're going to pray for all y'all and then we're going to uh, cheer them into that room. And after they get into that room, Pastor George will come out and pray for offering so we're not done yet. Lord, we just thank you for all these people. We pray that they would reach out to you for a touch. That they would extend their heart towards you. And that you would touch their life. And I pray, Lord, you would teach us how to sense your presence. And then we would know you have your hand on us. We would be encouraged by it, reminded. Lord, I pray especially for that person or persons who wants to kill themselves. 
I pray you let them know right now you love them. You have a plan for their life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a right turn and walk this way. Amen.